today. I thank you to everyone for coming out today. Thank my part of my family for stopping by, and I thank each and every one of you friends and church members. Words cannot express my gratitude to you for how you held me up and continue to hold me up over the last two months. I thank you for your prayers because truly I know the prayers of the righteous of Delic much. Amen. And I felt your prayers and I, I thank you for your phone calls. I thank you for your cards. I, I just thank you for holding my family up. Because we couldn't have got through this. And we can't get through this. This is, this is not a, an event. This is a journey. Amen. Yes. And I, I'm learning now that all the thrills are gone away. There's, there's no more viewing. There's no more funeral. There's no more gravesite visits. There's nobody coming by the house sitting on the lawn. Now reality is hitting. Yes. Yes. And I'm realizing that she is gone. Yes. Yes. And I, I do miss her. But I still got to do what God has called me to do. Amen. And it's something about the preaching of the gospel that in the midst of your pain, God will bring you through. Yes. I can't figure it out. I can't tell you how it's done, but that's what God does. And that's what this text is about. This text, and y'all sung, I don't know how y'all knew it, but every song you sung is in this text. Amen. And I want to talk about the goodness of the Lord. Yeah. And I want to encourage you in spite of being in a pandemic. Yeah. We got a sovereign God yes, we serve. Yes. We got a God that's able to do exceedingly abundantly whatever we think or imagine. Yes, I understand you may get hit, you may wobble, but you won't fall down. Amen. Yeah. You may get hit hard, but you won't be knocked out. Because you got a God that's on your side. He's a present help in the time of trouble. And that's the good news. I come to encourage you today, in spite of what we're going through, God is on our side. Amen. Amen. And I thank Reverend Murky for reading the scripture, the entire 27th Psalm. I just want to park in the last two verses, which says, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. For a little while, I just want to talk about the goodness of the Lord. Almighty Father, everlasting God, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For a little while, allow your Holy Spirit to linger just a little while longer, that I can speak with simplicity, clarity, and with power. Not for fame or fortune, not to be well spoken of, but that you would get the glory. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And we all say, amen. 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 The goodness of the Lord. Psalm 27 of the one of Park in 13 and 14. The coronavirus, which began in China, has spread around the world. The World Health Organization and CDC has labeled it as a pandemic. Some felt safe in the United States because the ports were closed in addition to immigration, entry points and air, air flights were canceled and shut down. But still in all, here in September 2020, this virus has captured over 200,000 lives of United States citizens. But we want to give God glory in spite of that, God has kept us. In spite of all we've been through, all the changes, all the inconvenience we've been through as a people, God has been faithful. And I want you to understand, he is, he is your light and your salvation. Whom shall you fear? The Lord is the strength of your life. Whom shall you be afraid? Realize, it's not by your might, it's not by power, nor by might. But it's by his spirit, says the Lord. We can't get through this by ourselves. We got to lean and depend on Jesus. Yes. He's the only one yes. that can bring us through what we're going through. Yes. And while the world waits, church, 
What should the faithful do? We should follow the COVID-19 precautions that we have been given and trust in God's deliverance. Follow the world in the words of, of the doctors, but be dependent on God alone. Amen. Amen. Because God gives us common sense also. Amen. The Bible record indicates that when the death angels came through Israel, came through Egypt, that the faithful were turned to mark their door boy, doorways with blood, of blood of the lamb and prepare a meal and wait for the salvation of the Lord. There was weeping and there was welling all around them. Even some in Israel who did not seek the protection of the blood were among the mourners. The record also says that Noah's family was instructed to come out of the area where they were in and go into an ark because a flood was on the way. The family followed God's instruction and waited a year long of quarantine until they were safe to walk on dry ground. This ain't new to us. You just got to go back and look at your biblical history. God has been faithful down through the years. The record reminds us that the disciples were on a boat in the middle of a storm and somebody asked Jesus, do thou care for us? And Jesus got up off his sleep couch, walked up to the top of the boat, spoke to the wind and spoke to the wave and told him, peace be still. So whatever you're going through, nothing's too hard for God. Whatever you're challenged with, all you got to do is wait on God. And if you wait on God, God will show up. He may not show up when you want him, but when he shows up, he will be on time. So while we wait for this terrible pandemic to pass, the faithful must not faint. Even in the challenging, even your frightful, even in your terrifying time, God is still good. In spite of what you're going through. I, I learned that over the last two months. In spite of what I'm going through, my God is still good. My God is still a healer. My God is still a deliverer. My God is still a saint. My God is able to do what I need done. You know, in, in, in my life, I, I read scripture, but I hadn't lived long enough to, to know what they mean. But I know what it means when you cry and God will wipe the tears away. Oh, I, I'm living that today. Oh, I woke up this morning and I'm crying, but God wiped the tears away. I had to sit over there to be still, but God, I don't want you to let me cry now. Let me say what you want me to say. Then after all that, I can go somewhere and cry. Thank you, God. So as you remember, walking through the great minds of the world, or, or on his own volition, God will speak to the pandemic. Yeah. You don't believe me? He spoke to the cholera pandemic in 1899. He spoke to the Spanish flu in 1918. He spoke to the Hong Kong flu in 1968. And he spoke to Ebola. He spoke to HIV. And he spoke to some. God is able, church. I just thought about it. Jesus. Yes. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. Can't nobody 
do you like the Lord? You got to stand on his word. After you cried and prayed, after you prayed and cried, you got to stand on his word and watch God work it out. You ain't got to fix it. You ain't got to clean it up. Just be still and watch God do what only a sovereign God can do. As you already know, there's over 150 songs, most of which were written by David. Moses and many other worship leaders under the inspiration of God. The psalm deals with every emotion. The psalms deal with every emotion known to man. But to deal with those emotions in relationship with God is all about a relationship. And as you draw closer to God, God will draw closer to you. And just like a man loves his wife, just like a sibling loves another sibling, just like a child loves their mother, we need to learn how to draw nearer to God. And I'm not telling you to lack on loving those around you. But if you can love on God like you love on your mama, if you can love on God like you love on your daddy, oh, what a relationship you would have. They show the believer who bears their soul before God as they experience anger, as they experience love, as they experience anxiety, as they experience doubt, shame, and worry, and a proliferation of other emotions. Whatever you're going through, yes. it's all right to call me, but talk to God first. Yes. It's all right to call the deacon. It's all right to call the deaconess. It's all right to call one of the elders of the church, but talk to God first. Yes. Cry on God's shoulder first. Amen, amen. That when you call somebody else, you have just a little more strength to process what you're going through. You don't hear me. We can't get through this bias. We have to learn to call on Jesus first. We got to learn how to have an email in before we send an email. Yeah. Psalm 27 reminds us that the best solace in difficult times is godly confidence. Because faith in God is the best medicine for all seasons. The text says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my strength, is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked and even my enemies come upon me to eat up my flesh, they will stumble and fall. Though a host shall encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise up against me, in this will I be confident. Yeah. We got to learn as children of God, and I just stop by to encourage you. I just stop by to empower you to be confident that God's word is just what you need. Yeah. And your secret closet is your home court. And when you go into your closet and pray, you're praying to God that God will instill in you through his word the confidence to stand in the midst of the storm all around. Yeah. It's thunder and lightning and rain is coming out. And the trees are blowing and the wind is blowing. But God said, stand. Yeah. Because all I got to do is speak. Yeah. And I, the wind will behave itself. Yeah. All I got to do is speak and the rain is stop. All I got to do is speak and the the thunder will lower its voice. All I got to do is speak. No matter what you're going through. And we're dealing with a pandemic now, but whatever you're going through in your life, God is able. God is able to take you the way you got to go. Because we as Christians, our faith is grounded on this text and it's grounded on a scripture found in Romans around the 28th verse. All things, all things work together for the good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So we as children of God should not cry as we're going through what we're going through. But we should give God glory. And I, I know it's an oxymoron. I'm in pain, Reverend. You can't tell me not to cry. I'm not telling you not to cry. I'm telling you to process what you need to process. But give the glory to God. Because no matter what we go through, the God we serve is still good. Thank you, Lord. It's still good. No matter what station we find ourselves in, God is still good. In these difficult times, David writes that he would have fainted if his faith had not allowed him to look through the threads of danger 
and see the experience of the goodness of God. Yeah. Are you, have you ever been there mm -hmm. where the storms of life are raging mm -hmm. and God can put you in a place that you can look beyond the storm yes. and see the bright sunshine? Yes. Yes. That's what God will do. Ain't nothing magnificent. Ain't nothing mighty. It's just a small word that if you could just hold out right here yes. in due time, in the morning, yes. in a few days, in a few weeks, in a few, yes. it's gonna be all right. Yes. But if you, but you got to hold out here. Yes. You got to be still here as you go through the season that you're presently in. Yes, sir. Yes. Brother David saw tragedy all around him, but faith allowed him to also see the goodness of the Lord. Mm -hmm. He saw dark losses all around him, but God allowed him to see the bright and sh bright shining light every now and then. In the midst of what you're going through, yes. God will show you the hope that you're standing in need. Yes. I was on a prayer line this morning. They prayed for the past. They prayed for the present. And they prayed for the future. And they prayed for the purpose that God had in our lives. And right now, we need to tell God thank you thank for bringing you. us from January yes. down to September. We don't know when it's going to end. But if that was the roughest of it, God's been good. If that is the worst it could get, God has been kind. If that is the worst it can get, God has been faithful to each and every one of us. In spite of what you've been through in the pandemic, God has been faithful. Yes, Lord. Yes, He has. And I thank Him for that. Yes, He has. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Whenever difficulties increase, the faithful give witness of three truths, and I'll be finished. The first one is when we lean heavily on the power of God. Often in emergencies, we learn how we are dependent on the power of God. Huh. Have you ever been in a situation where it showed up but with no forecast that it was coming? Yeah. Have you ever been in a storm, the storm showed up, but it didn't come on Channel 7? Yeah. The meteorologist didn't tell you that a storm, but the storm came. Well. But in the midst of it coming, you didn't mind taking a roadblock. You didn't mind taking a, a, a rest stop and calling on the name of Jesus. Hmm. Lord, I don't know what's going on, but Lord, I stand in the need of help. God, I don't know what's going on around me, but God, I need you to put your hand over me. I need you to cover me with your blood. I need you to order my steps in your word. I need you to keep my mind stayed on you, that I can keep my mind in perfect peace. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. When tornado force winds come, or flood waters rose, they learn to wait patiently to move. Some ordered the members of their household to sit still during the storm and wait for God to do his work to push the storm past. They sat confidently because they knew the power of God. I got a great grandmother, Violet Brooks. Every time I went to a house and caught up in a storm, she would tell me and my cousin, sit down on that couch. We're going to cut everything off that can be unplugged. And we're going to wait on God to do what God's going to do. I don't know if him and his wife, him, him and the devil are having a misunderstanding, but we're going to be still. We're going to wait on God. Don't speak the TV cut off. TV unplugged. Only thing plugged in was the refrigerator. But we were obedient. I, I didn't understand what she was talking about. But she had a relationship with God that when God's at work, be still. Yeah, amen. It's in these difficult times, church. The entire world is uneasy on the verge of panic. Yet the, the faithful, like the old timers, are taking the necessary precautions and waiting confidently on God to move this thing away. The faithful are not foolish. We do, we, do what we, should, we do what should be done. But we are not panicked because we know the restorative power of the true and living God. He'll work it out. Whether we need him to or not, he's going to work it out. And we ain't got to see him work it out, nor do we got to stand in the window and look. You just be faithful to God, and in time, this thing's going to turn around. Uh, we seen him work in the Bible. We seen him work in our own life experiences. And we live in all of his power and lean heavily upon his deliverance. That's why the songwriter can say, leaning, leaning, safe and secure or from all alarms, leaning on the everlasting arm of God. Have you been there? Amen. Don't just sing the song. Life will put you in a place you will live the song. Because when the alarm sounds, you ain't ready for them. And that's why on Saturdays we have the alarms sounding in our communities. Those alarms sound just because just if a flood comes, 
or catastrophe come, they're alerting you that something's wrong in the town. Y'all yeah. don't have them in y'all town? Y'all looking at me funny. <laughs> the law don't do about 11, 30, quarter, 12, every Saturday? Okay, bless your heart, bless your heart. Right. I live in an urban community. I don't know what they do on the hill. The second point is no matter what the situation, God is always good. Believers are true and faithful regardless of the challenges we face. We remain strong because we know the essential goodness of the Lord. Whether we experience anxiety, whether we experience loss, whether we experience even death, our affirmation is that in thee, O oh Lord, I will put my trust. In thee, O oh Lord. I, will, I ain't going to put my trust in man. I ain't going to put my trust in the bank. I ain't going to put my trust in the job. I ain't going to put my trust in the, tr in, the, in, the, in, the, in the car. I'm putting my trust in God. When we struggle to understand pandemic losses and troubles of the pandemic, we are tempted to question what seems to be the inactivity of God. And we ask, why is it so much pain and why is so much misery alive? I don't have the answer to that. But I do know that the God we serve is faithful. The God we serve is able to do exceedingly abundant whatever we think or imagine. And trouble has been coming ever since the beginning of time. Ever since the fall in chapter 3 of Genesis, turmoil has been coming through this world. Mm -hmm. And it's a part of living, but living with the hope that you got a God that's able to do what needs to be done. Yes. God never promised us immunity from the storms of life. He never promised us that we would all, there would always be sunshine. However, he did promise that he would never leave us yes. nor forsake us. He would be with us even yes. to the end yes. of the age. Yes. So no matter what you're going yes. through, God is right there. Amen. All you got to do is do like this. Thank you, God. Yes. That's how close God is. Amen. You may not feel him, but trust him even though you can't trace him. Yes. Because he's ever to his word. Yes, he is. And every time, and I, I just say every now and then, God likes to play a little hide and seek. He right there with you. Come here, Joe. Yet though he's slave, yet will I trust him. Yes. I'm going to wait until my change comes. Yes. God giveth and God taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Don't get upset with God because he's taking something away. He's taking something away to grow you. He's taking something away to empower you, to strengthen you. You don't realize it. But whatever God does in our lives, he's doing it for our good. Thank you, Lord. And that's awesome for us. Because how do you tell me it was good? See, you can't tell me. God can. Because God is the creator. God is the author and the finisher of my faith. That dual promise that promises a place in, in, in his care on either side of Jordan, the faithful must not sink so low that they begin to speak as doubters or speak and question God's authority. In spite of what God did, give him glory. You may not feel like it, but give him glory. That's what the saints do. In spite of their situation, in spite of their turmoil, in spite of what they're going, they give God glory in the midst of their pain, in the midst of their hurt, in the midst of their misunderstanding. Because we have no problem praising God when God dropped favor in our life. When God opened the door and made a way, we had no problem. When God allowed us to have a healthy baby, we had no problem. Right. Yeah, we had pain waiting for the waiting for the delivery to happen. But once that baby came through, Amen. we were full of joy. Yeah. So that's that's the challenge for us is to wait on God. We never ask God why He chooses to bless us because you got to remember, as He blesses you, some pain is going to come with that too. Yeah. Yeah. So as you say thank you for the blessing, say thank you for the pain also. We are soldiers in the army of the Lord. Sometimes there's smoke. Sometimes there's fire. Sometimes there's tragedy on the battlefield. Sometimes comrades fall, but we must sing with the resolve of our parents. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promise him that I will serve him till I die. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. So if you're on the battlefield for your Lord, every now and then you're going to get a flesh wound. Every now and then a bone is going to break. Every now and then somebody 
close to you. It's going to pass away. But realize you're on the Lord's battlefield. Realize you're serving the Lord. And if you serve the Lord, who that who has left you, those who have been hurt around you, God's going to make it all better yes. in due time. Yes. But the Bible declares that Gabriel's going to sound a trumpet. And Jesus would be there with his reward in his hand, and the dead in Christ shall rise. And everybody else will be called up to meet him. Realize the blessed hope that we have. This is not our home. We're just graveyard travelers passing through. We just borrow family and friends. This is not permanent. Here, we get the name father. We get the name son. We get the name uncle. We get the name grand. But up there, 